Hello everyone. It's time we talk about the thrift savings plan and how it works. I'm going to make it very simple so that everyone can understand, even me. Stand by. Hello everyone, it's time that we break down the thrift savings plan so that even someone like me can understand it. So, this is going to be a joint type of program. This is going to be recorded both for the YouTube channel, the podcast, and for the radio program all at once. So, this might be a bit short compared to some episodes, and maybe a little long for some others, but it will work out. All right. Now, I'm going to be posting, at least for the radio program, a bit more resources than normal because this is very numbers and information heavy. So I want everyone to be sure to understand the information I'm putting out and be clear on how all of this works. For now, I'm going to talk about the funds within the Thrift Savings Plan. I'm going to do two funds per week. And then at the end of three weeks, after I've covered all the funds, I will then go into a few other specifics over or regarding how the TSP, the Thrift Savings Plan, actually works. And I'm going to have a lot of resources available for you to see as well. Now, for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll have to forgive me because I am going to be reading a lot of information just to make sure that I don't mess up. Yes, I know a lot of it off the top of my head, but I want to make sure while staring at the all-seeing eye here that the... The stress of it, yes, it is stressful staring at a camera, that the stress of it does not make me slip up and say the wrong thing. So, I'm going to read a lot of information, and I hope you'll forgive me in advance. So, here we go. For this week, I'm going to cover the G Fund and the F Fund. Phonetically, that's the Golf and Foxtrot Fund. And for those who are not familiar... There are five funds in the Thrift Savings Plan, and they are all identified by letters. I'm going to talk about a sixth type of fund at the end. It's identified by a letter as well, but it it is a composite of the other five. We'll get to that when we get to it. In fact, I should do a little bit of an intro. I have talked about the Thrift Savings Plan before on YouTube and on the radio program, but let me do a little bit more of an intro here first. The Thrift Savings Plan is a type of an investment plan that is available to the military and to federal employees. It's very similar to a 401k plan, and I can see people's eyes, or at least in my head, I can see people's eyes glazing over or your ears freezing up already. Don't do that. I can make this very easy. Numbers and and dollars are not that scary, believe me, at at least if you don't let them be scary. A lot of people are intimidated by numbers, and they don't have to be. We're taught as a culture that numbers are scary, and they're really that they're really not that not that hard. So let's just go for, through this as a real simple you know type of exploration, and I think we'll learn a lot. So what is a 401k? It's it's an investment plan. Oh no, investment! No no no! Don't don't be scared. It's a way to save money and hopefully make more money. Now, okay, an investment is not really like a savings account. You're not earning interest, or at least normally you're not. 
You're putting your money into something and hoping it grows. I know, I know, that's, that's where people start to get scared. But again, don't worry. At least not yet. An investment is taking a chance normally. You are hoping that things improve over time. But if you don't take a risk, you don't have any gain. And we all are wanting to make a gain at some point. There are different ways to improve yourself over time, either financially, physically, spiritually. This thrift savings plan is one way that you can potentially improve yourself financially. Now, whether or not I support it or not is something I'm going to leave completely out of this. I have my own opinions one way or the other. And yes, I do have money in the thrift savings plan. And other than that, I'm leaving my opinion out of this. So let's just go into this with eyes wide open. Let's get all the information we can and go from there. So the thrift savings plan is a type of investment vehicle that you can use to hopefully make your money grow and have more money for yourself later on when you reach your retirement years. And in the case of this particular type of investment, the law is written so that you can withdraw your money without any sort of penalty when you are 59 and a half or older. All right, so enough intro for right now. Let's get into this type of fund and the other one that I want to talk about for now and go from there. So the first fund about which I want to talk is the G Fund. This is the Government Securities Investment Fund, and this is the only one of the funds in which you are guaranteed not to lose money. Now, what does it mean when you have a guarantee of this sort? Put your thinking cap on. What does this mean? Ding, ding, you're right. So, if you have a guarantee that you're not going to lose money, it probably means that you will not make a lot of money either. Historically, since the inception of this fund, inception means creation, I'm, I'm not trying to belittle you here, but I don't want to speak in words that people don't understand either. I am trying to use plain English after all. Since the inception of the fund in 1987, the G Fund has had a 5% return. Now, that's over time. The 10-year performance of the G Fund, meaning the last 10 years, has been 2.38%. So, you can't go with the full life of the fund. You have to look at other numbers as well. And that's why I'm here. I'm a number guy. So... You don't always have to look at all the numbers yourself. And actually, the the document I'm using as a reference is a simple two-page fact sheet that I'm going to put in the references for this episode. You can see it yourself. So everything that I'm saying in this episode, I'm going to post for you to see as well. And if you want to see that and even more, you can go to tsp.gov, that's Tango Sierra Papa .gov, and see much more than that. The only problem I have with any of these documents that are available on this website is they do not do what I wish everyone did. They do not do what RC Retirement does, which is speak in plain English. For example, this very fact sheet has several things on it that are complicated and you have to read them several times in order to really understand it. So I'm going to boil it down and hopefully make it simple. All right, so what is the G Fund? The G Fund is essentially a treasury bill, a tre not, not really a treasury bill, it's a treasury, what's the word I want? Because I'm not finding it on the sheet. My eyes are not focusing here. The G Fund is a treasury note. It's a treasury certificate like you can get off of the stock exchange. It's, it's, a, a, it's a treasury bond, a treasury note. 
basically a, a bond you can buy from the federal government, from the treasury. But this is a unique sort of treasury bond, treasury note, that can only be purchased by the thrift savings plan. In fact, by law, only the thrift savings plan can be issued this sort of treasury note. And the, the way this particular note works is it can be bought and sold by you every day, or well, again, we don't, we're not going to get into how you make purchases right now, but if you were able to make daily purchases, you could make, you could buy and sell every day, but, and the rate of return is adjusted on a monthly basis based on factors that I'm not going to describe because the paragraph, if you could see me on the video, is about two inches long and I'm not going to describe it right now. But anyway, the, the G fund is set up to be a, a way to outperform inflation and prevent loss over time but it doesn't really perform well when you compare it to the market as a whole. Now, again, you've got to determine what your, your own volunteer, volatility tolerance is. What are you willing to risk? What are you willing to accept as a risk? The G fund is not bad if you are willing to accept safety over performance and there have been times when I have put all of my t of my TSP um, holdings in the G fund because I have thought that there were um, that there were market volatilities in the future and I wanted to safeguard my money from that so I shifted everything into the G fund and then when I thought that safety was around the corner and wanted to take advantage of market upswings, I shifted my money back into other funds. And that's something you can do as well. Now, one thing that is interesting is even though this is in a treasury note, the performance of the G fund is still higher than short-term treasury notes that you can get off of the stock exchange. And the reason for that, just to get a little bit technical, is the interest rate on the TSP Treasury note is based off of long-term Treasury notes. And if you look at bank account savings rates, for just as a, an example, you'll notice that long-term savings account rates tend to be higher than short-term savings account rates, or let's say, rather than savings accounts, let's say short-term versus long-term CD rates tend to be higher. That makes a lot more sense than talking about savings account rates. So same thing applies with bonds and treasury notes. All right, so I think I've confused everyone enough talking about the G fund. Now let's take a quick break just for me to reset things here. And then I will talk about the F fund. Okay, now let's talk about the F fund or Foxtrot for those who speak phonetics. All right, the F fund is the fixed income index investment fund. This is the first of the funds where you do have the potential to have a loss. You can make more money than the previous fund, the G fund, but there is the potential for a loss. Now, now you heard me say a moment ago, fixed income. So that makes you think, wait a minute, this is fixed, right? That means there should be some sort of stability, something more predictable, right? So why is there potential for loss? Well, let me describe the fund and it might make a little bit more sense. So the fixed income index is composed primarily of treasury and state, local security, and 
agency bonds, be they corporate or other types of bonds. And the well, the fund itself is an index. I, I really didn't define what an index was, and I'm, I don't really have the time to do so, so I'm going to skip that for the moment. The the objective of the F fund is to match the performance of what's called the Bloomberg Barclays uh, Aggregate Bond Index, which is a very broad index of the U.S. bond market. And I know that's a whole bunch of gibberish for most people. Uh, believe it or not, bonds can lose money. And I know, again, that also blows people away. But it, it is true. If you think back to 2008, a lot of the losses that were incurred back then were bonds, strangely enough. A lot of people who owned bonds lost money because those bonds were invested in the housing market. Everything was linked together, and they still are. So if one sector of the economy lost money, then so did the bonds, and, and therefore, the in this case, the index as a whole lost money. So maybe I'm not doing what I hoped with this series already. Maybe I'm not explaining things as well as I had intended, but I'm going to keep trying. Anyway, the F fund is trying anyway to match the performance of one of the larger stock or rather bond indexes and minimize the risk to the TSP participants anyway who participate in it. All right. So last with the last fund I mentioned what the overall lifetime earnings were for the fund so I'll do the same here since the inception of the F fund, the lifetime earnings rate has been 6.33%, so a little bit higher than the G fund, which was 5.03, a little bit better. But again, I said don't look at lifetime, look at something smaller like 10 or 5. Well, let's just look at the 10, where it was 4%. Okay, still a little bit better than the G fund, which, like I said before, was 2.3, I think I said. Moving on. The, the F fund, as I said before, is, is the most stable of the funds where you could lose money. It is a risk, like all of the other funds can be. But of those other funds, it is the least volatile. That's just because of the nature of bonds. But do keep in mind that even bonds can lose money. All right, that's enough for this week. And everyone on the radio is certainly going to be glad that I have shut up for now. For those of you on YouTube, this is no longer a joint recording. I stopped on the radio side a moment ago. For now, we can just say switch gears. Yep, nope, oh, there we go. I never point in the right direction. For those of you who would not hit subscribe, please go right over here and do so. And make me very happy. Uh, I've been a bit bumpy with this episode. I, I realize that and will do better with the next one. The F fund has always been a weird one for me, so I always have a bit of difficulty with explaining that one. That is my fault. How do you explain a bond when the first... There I go waving a cigar cutter around. When the first fund you've described sounds like the same thing you're describing with the second one. So, yeah, that, that one's always kind of weird. All right. So, anyway, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. And, of course, be sure to tune in next week 
where we will talk about two more funds within the Thrift Savings Plan. Thank you for joining me, and of course, thank you for your service, and of course, since it is that day of the year, have a great 4th of July. Thank you very much. If you liked what you heard on today's episode, then please go below and give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RC Retirement website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for entertainment and informational purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel, accountant, and financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.